you, I would like to invite you into the practice, the spiritual practice of scooch. <laughs> the spiritual practice of scooch that we don't usually have this practice is to people come in, they have more room to sit towards the back. If you don't mind, so you have some space at my you that scooch will move on around. Wow, this is 
school. <laughs> Great. Uh, we did some rearranging of the sanctuary. A bit for the service and workshop today to embody the practice of gathering in a circle, as do many indigenous tribes around the world gather. Please make whatever adjustments to this arrangement that you need. We can also bring down more chairs or whatever we need. Today's very special workshop is called Roots of Injustice, Seeds of Change, and begins at 12.30 until 2.30. This special interactive workshop will explore the historical injustices faced by indigenous people and discuss ways to foster healing and positive change in our relationships. Space is limited to 50 participants, and y'all, we only have three spots remaining. Please let Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen, please let Mary Ellen know if you would like to, uh, to join us. And a contribution of $20 or whatever you can afford would surely be appreciated. And you might be asking, if it's going to start at 12, you might be asking, what about lunch? <laughs> right? What about lunch? We'll have a potluck after the church service and before the workshop. A, contr uh, a contribution is not required. Just come and eat. <laughs> Since we have a large group today, we also have tables set up outside in addition to the ones inside. Oh, and I don't know, I didn't check with Pete if we need to have chairs, help with chairs. I, I'm not sure either. We might need to help move some chairs. We're okay? Great. 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 Anyone who is new to our congregation is invited to join our membership chair, Linda Bell, uh, and others to get to know us and give us a chance to get to know you. We welcome to, uh, you are welcome to join us at the potluck and eat in Dana's office as you converse. Linda, back there in the back. Uh, Homeward Alliance, um, so many thanks. To the, all of, all of y'all who brought donations for Homeward Alliance these past few weeks, today is our last day for collecting donations, and they are right over on the other side by the window if you want to, um, to, to still give. There's time. Choir rehearsal. We are going to meet again. I'm part of the, crowd, the choir, and I'm so excited. <laughs> we are meeting this Thursday, August 29th, from 6.30 to 8 o'clock, and all are welcome. If you can sing, come on. Even if you can't, come on. Come on. Next Sunday service is Sacred Solidarity, Labor in Faith Spaces, with special guest speaker Lynn Harris from the statewide organization Together Colorado. Lynn is also a labor organizer, <clears throat> with the Colorado AFL-CIO. Many thanks to Anne-Marie Kajinski for being the worship associate next week. Labor Day is a time not only to celebrate the contributions of working people, but also to connect our struggle for dignity, democracy, and collective voice on the job to fundamental values of all faith traditions. Here in Colorado, our faith communities and labor movements have a strong history of working together. Join us as we honor this partnership and build solidarity. If you have a brief personal joy or sorrow you would like to share in today's service, but don't want to come up here to the mic, write it down on a form that will be collected by the ushers during the offering. Oh, <laughs> and we want to we want to thank everyone who is a part of the service today. And for brevity's sake, I'm not going to list everyone's name. But if you see someone involved, I invite you to thank them for uh, being involved. We have many people behind the scenes today, so thank you. And in that regard, if you happen to see that we need some help to set up for. Um, the potluck or tear down or clean up, many hands make short work. So uh, I invite you to, to jump in and, and help out. Thank you very much. And with that, we have a chant that we would like to use to begin our service together.
we'll do this chant a couple of times. So as soon as you feel comfortable with it, just join in. So it goes like this. We stand on holy ground. We do not stand together, we create holy space on holy ground. The space between us and within us, the ground on which we move. Let us begin with a blessing of our gathered space. This is a brief excerpt from the Hoden, Hodenoshin, Shani, Hodenoshani Thanksgiving Address found in the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. If you agree with each line, please respond to each statement with, we give our thanks and our blessing. The Earth Mother. We are all thankful to our mother, the Earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk upon her. It gives us joy that she continues to care for us as she has from the very beginning. To our mother, we send greetings and thanks. Maybe put your hand out to our mother. We give greeting and thanks, and now our minds are one. We give our thanks and blessing. Thank you. The waters. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life. We know its power in many forms. Waterfalls and rain, mist and streams, rivers and oceans. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of water. Now our minds are one. Now our minds are We give thanks and our blessings. The sun, the sun. We now send greetings and thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Each day, without fail, he travels the sky from east to west, bringing the light of a new day. He is the source of all fires of life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. Now our minds are one. We give our thanks, thanks and, and our, our blessings. blessings. The four winds. We are all thankful to the powers we know as the four winds. We hear their voices in the moving air as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help us to bring the change of seasons. From the four directions they come, bringing us messages and giving us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the four winds. Now our minds are one. We give our thanks and our blessings. Thank you. And with closing words, we have now arrived at the place where we end our words. Of all things we have named, 
It was not our intention to leave anything out. And since this is an abbreviated version, we left a lot out. If something was forgotten, we leave it to each individual to send such greetings and thanks in their own way. Now our minds are one. We give thanks and our blessings. And now I invite us to join together in saying our affirmation, which will be followed by another chant. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is call. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. For this chant, it is a call and response chant, and your part is in bold, and Katie will lead that part for you. In beauty we walk. It's, a, it's a, a beautiful way to sit. Thank you for making room for each other. I have a story. You guys want to have a story? You want to come up here with me? It's going to be fun. <laughs> I know. They're my granddaughters. What can I say? <laughs> <They're> sh- <laughs> Are you being shy? It's OK. All right. But the fun thing is you get to help me pour a little sand in this jar. So first. What is in this jar? Do you guys, what do you think is in here? What's that look like to you? Dirt? Yeah, you're right, it's dirt. It's a bunch of dirt, otherwise known as soil. There might be a few weeds in here too, actually. uh, But weeds are just another beautiful plant, right? So for thousands of years, Native Americans lived on this land, and the Europeans came. And when the Europeans came, they thought they had a better way of doing things, okay? So Europeans are generally, we we know that we're from European descent because our skin is generally pretty white. Mm -hmm. And that would be us. And when they came to the Americas, they brought these different ways. First they came and they took the land. How would you like it if somebody came and took your home away from you and took the land away from you. Well, that's what we did to native people. And they took over and controlled all the land. And they also controlled the native people. And many of them died or were hurt or were forced to live in ways that were very different from what they were used to and how they wanted to live. So there is a really big word for this that we use to describe the controlling of the land and the people who live on it. Colonization. Colonization. Can you guys want to try saying that word? Colonization. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of a not very good word. We also refer to it as white supremacy culture. Yeah. And 
So I'm going to pour some sand in over this great soil that is wonderful, fertile soil. But having sand in it, it's not going to work so well. It's kind of hard to grow things. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Okay. You want to help me? No. Okay. So we're going to, so this is kind of, this is going to mess things up. All this white sand, make it much harder to grow something. And over time, other things were added to the soil as well. Well, let me see. I skipped a part, sorry. These Europeans also brought new ways of being together. And those being, the ways of being together uh, did not allow women to have property or even have jobs or even vote. And this is what we call patriarchy. Do you want to? OK. Well, I need all the help I can get, I'm sure. <laughs> So here's some patriarchy, which is also getting in the way of our soil being able to grow. Then these Europeans decided that while the land was rich and grew a lot of things, they could grow it even richer themselves by forcing other people to work the land. So the Europeans brought slavery to America. I think it deserves the using the black sand for that. And they forced people from Africa onto ships and brought them all the way across the ocean and made them work without any land or without money. And they were really mean to those people. And then we also have Over time, other things were added. Not letting people love who they wanted to love, not helping people who are dis disabled, making it difficult for poor people to earn money. <laughs> That's in the news quite a bit, isn't it? Too bad it hasn't changed yet. And some things have gotten better, but we have a long way to go. In many states, women still cannot do what they want with their bodies, or they used to be able to, and now they can't. And slavery, as it existed 200 or 400 years ago, may not exist in the way that it did, but there are still, as we heard last week, 50 million slaves on the planet. <clears throat> so how can good food and other good things grow with this very bad soil? See, now it's very bad soil. We can't get down to the dirt where that we can actually grow something. So if we want to be healthy and live in a world where everyone is cared for, we need to remove the sand. I don't want to make a big mess here, <laughs> but I think we know that it, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of time to remove the sand, every last little grain. So the best way to do this is to do this work together so we can plant the seeds of love and justice in the world. Will you help me do that? You will? You promise? <laughs> will you all help me do that? All right, we'll help each other do that. May it be so. Thank you. And we're going to sing you off to class. Okay. You guys want to go play? Sing and go now in peace. Maybe we won't make our... <laughs> Might be a little challenging to... We could put our hands up, though. <clears throat> it's a little blessing. Okay. Ready? Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the spirit of love surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Thank you.
Our chalice lighting today is a reading by Reverend Mike Johnson entitled, A False Story of Discovery. <clears throat> Y'all mind if I come down yeah. here and be a little bit, I don't wanna be up there. Perhaps many people are willing to acknowledge if pressed that when Columbus supposedly discovered America, it was already full of people. But that discovery has a more sinister history that's not often talked about. Prior to 1492, European church leaders and monarchs had collaborated in a stunning series of proclamations, which became known as the Doctrine of Discovery. In 1452, a papal bull, which is, I didn't know this, a document from a Catholic church is called a, a bull, declared that the king of Portugal had the right to conquer any Muslim and pagan peoples and enslave them. A few years later, a second letter declared that all the Christian kings of Europe had the right to take the lands and possessions of any non-Christian people and keep them in perpetuity. And if the pagan inhabitants could be converted to the Christian faith, they might be spared but otherwise they can be enslaved or killed. The doctrine of discovery was also later claimed by England in 1496, authoring English explorers to seize any lands not already discovered by other Christian nations. The doctrine of discovery became the legal basis for the discoveries of Columbus and others and for the resulting attempts to conquer and colonize the Western Hemisphere, unleashing genocide on its peoples. <clears throat> it was also the legal basis for the slave trade. Its influence did not remain in that distant past. It is still a source of oppression to this day. It became the basis of U.S. Indian law beginning in 1823, when Chief Justice John Marshall ruled that Christian people who had, who had discovered the land of heathens had assumed the right of dominion and thus had diminished the Indian rights to complete sovereignty as an independent nation. He claimed Indians had merely a right of occupancy in their lands. This decision has never been overturned and is still cited on a regular basis in federal court. Responding to the request of indigenous people, several religious denominations have passed resolutions to repudiate the doctrine of discovery, including Unitarian Universalist in 2012. These resolutions are a first step toward reckoning with this history of stolen lands and stolen children. As an update, Dana wanted me to let y'all know that on March 30th, 2023, the Vatican, after 500 years, finally officially repudiated the doctrine of discovery, but the damage is done. I'm going to get my, lap, my chalice lighter. If I can figure out how to do this. <clears throat> we light this challenge today to illuminate our way forward toward healing and true reconciliation with the indigenous people. Thank you, Debbie. Mm -hmm. And each week you support the work of this congregation and all the ways we live our values in the world through your generosity. In addition to supporting this church, half of your donations support a local nonprofit organization, helping us to make a difference beyond our walls. This week, <clears throat> this month, and last month, we are supporting Loveland Safe Lots. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so part of their um, program says that uh, Loveland Safe Lots is a grassroots organization providing safe, legal, overnight parking for unhoused individual seniors and families in the Loveland area. In partnership with other nonprofit agencies, 
We currently host seven vehicles which stay with us overnight between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And right now, this is uh, two different um, Lutheran congregations are using their parking lots, King of Glory Lutheran Church and Zion Lutheran Church. So uh, all of the funds that we donate help pay for a, um, everything from basic supplies to cleaning the porta potties. And, and just by adding two more um, cars, it takes a lot more to clean the porta potties. Who knew? <clears throat> and we help pay for car repairs for people. I mean, if, if your car is your home, it's really important that it works. Um, helping to get people into an apartment and helping to start yet another lot. Don't you wish we had a parking lot? You probably yeah. wish that for many reasons, but yeah. <laughs> it would be great if we could be, have a parking lot for this. So please give generously to support this wonderful program. Thank you. Donna, that was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now is the time in our um, service in the life of this congregation where we share what's happening in, in our lives and the important milestones and the joys and the concerns and all that's happening. So um, if you happen to have a brief that is, if, if you want to hear any kind of a sermon, and you might not want to, but, but if you do, if we could do a brief personal joy or sorrow that you would like to share, I invite you to come forward or raise your hand and I will bring you the microphone. And I will also share any written comments um, that we have collected. So if there are any written comments, if someone would bring those to me, then maybe there aren't. And those of you online, good morning, good morning. Glad you're with us. Um, please share your comments in the chat, and our Zoom host, Doug, will, um, will read them aloud. So I, uh, I, I think uh, many people are walking a little lighter this week um, after a very, very important convention that I will not talk about. But uh, I'm, I'm glad it has brought joy and and uh, into your lives. 
So any, any other comments? Hi, I'm Jennifer, and I've just returned from Seattle. This is a bittersweet um, comment, because um, I was there helping um, babysit my two grandsons while Rachel and Seth packed up their house wow. um, to get ready to, um, they're now on their journey to go spend a year in Amman, Jordan. Um, so I'm going to really, really, really miss them. And um, so, but they're going to have an adventure. So that's good. Yeah. Well, we hold you and them in our hearts and wish them all the best on their journey in this, this time away. And I hope you get to go see them. Yeah. yeah. I know it's hard. Good morning. My name's Sally. I've had a really rough week. I lost my oldest and dearest friend this two days ago. She's back in Jersey. Um, we had stayed too close. She had spent time with me here, actually, and really enjoyed this church. Um, but um, you know, when you get to be 80 plus, this happens way too often. Those of you who've been in similar circumstances know how horrible it is to lose one friend after another. And this was my best. So oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what was your best friend's name? Carol. Carol? Carol, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and we hold you and Carol and Carol's family in our hearts and send okay. you lots of love. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We hold you in our hearts. Thank you. Others? Just coming in this morning, my name's John, and um, John we were greeted by the woman at the door saying, you, you've been gone. You're back. It was good to see you. And it just made me realize how much like home this is. And so it's it's a joy. And as we heard, there's just many sorrows. And I feel like this place holds much of that in its collective heart. And, and you are home, John. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> we hold you in our hearts. Others? Got one on Zoom? Yes. Katie's Ryan says, I was able to do dad things, change oil, work on a car for my bonus daughter, Nixie, this weekend. I'm glad Katie's kids have accepted me and made yesterday an awesome day. Awesome. What a wonderful right. joy, Ryan. Yeah, we hold you in our hearts with love and joy. That's great. Okay, I think that's it. So I would like to take a moment and invite us into a spirit of meditation and prayer. Turning inward. Notice your breath and notice your feet grounded in this present moment on the earth. Breathing in, I know that I am breathing in and breathing out, I know that I am breathing out. Staying with that breath in and out Consider all the feet that have ever been in this very spot. Throughout the life of this church, the various denominations back to the Lutherans who built it in 1915, each person with their stories of joy, 
hope, tenderness, heartbreak, and grief. And let us remember this present moment is not in isolation. This moment is connected to all the other moments that have ever occurred in this spot. And going further back, before the building even existed, indigenous tribes, many different tribes, use this area as a crossroads. Perhaps sitting in this very spot, living in this very spot. Native travelers passing through. And then the invasion of Euro, white Euro Americans, feeling justified in domination perhaps coming slowly at first, the struggle for the land, the natives struggling for their lives and their way of life. In this spot, in this very spot, and all across the nation. The devastating tragedy of removing native indigenous people also happened on this spot. This present moment is connected to all of it. And we are all connected to those who experienced it. So in this moment of peace and quiet, let us pray for healing for the spirits of all those who lived through the brutality, the generational harm of all that followed the invasion, the ending of the native way of life on native land that was theirs and that we stole, the millions of children who were taken away by the invaders over many decades they too were stolen away. Let us pray for healing for all of the descendants who carry the generational wounds of white Euro-American brutality, broken treaties, and unjust laws. Let us pray for that healing. Let us hold hope for that healing. And let us pray for an end to this outrageous, unjustified, evil mindset. Yes, I said all of those words. Outrageous, unjustified, evil mindset that gave permission to this harm. Let us pray for a new way, for the beautiful and powerful great spirit of native indigenous people to heal into wholeness, becoming fully alive and thriving again in this world. May we companion them to make it so, and may we work in partnership to make it so. Amen. Please join with me in singing, How Could Anyone, in the spirit of singing this to our indigenous brothers and sisters, siblings.
let your heart be broken. Let yourself grieve as you let the magnitude of harm and devastation sink in. For in that grief, we remember the humanity and the divinity of Native people, gaining a bit more understanding of all they have been through. Quoting from an article on National Public Radio, talking about the doctrine of discovery. As you heard, it was a series of papal bulls that authorized colonial powers such as Spain and Portugal to seize land and subjugate people in Africa and the New World. As long as people were not Christians, well, how could they be? Little did I know until I learned from this particular article that later popes revoked the decrees in the early 1500s, like around 1530. They actually said, no, no, we, we disagree with this. Take, we take it all back. That wasn't divine word of God after all, right? <laughs> but how on earth can you take that back they wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And who knows, maybe those popes were pressured into saying it in the first place. But that was ignored. And as you heard, it was in 1823, it was written into our constitution. Well, our, our legal system, our legal system, not our constitution, but is still referred to, the last time it was referred to in a legal document was 2005. That Native people do not deserve or have the right to have land, but to just live on the land. So the justification for the stealing of the land and abuse of the indigenous nations already living here came under the veil of doing good. What a tricky veil, a veil of doing good. You know, the slogan was, we must save the Indian by making him a Christian. Kill the Indian, save the man was the slogan. Did you know that? We don't know that, but I'll tell you what, everyone on every reservation knows it and knows it well. I'm sorry to say. My friend and Unitarian Universalist scholar and historian, Reverend Daniel Harper tells us, after the Civil War, various religious groups were assigned to Native American groups. The Christian religion, especially Protestant Christianity, was considered a civilizing force, a means by which white settlers could maintain control over native peoples by forcibly integrating them into white culture. If you're astounded and appalled, good. This used to just be normal every day Oh yeah, yeah, that's what we did. No big deal. So let's unnormalize this, shall we? The Unitarians were considered Christians in the 1870s. Like he says, we got kicked out of the Christian club about 1900 or so, sort of. And as a small denomination, we were assigned to the Youths of Colorado a group of native nations then living in Colorado, different Ute tribes that were later forcibly removed to Utah. The Unitarians considered it their mission work, a way of spreading the Unitarian religion through good works among non-whites and therefore less civilized people. We established a school for Ute children but it's not actually listed in the federal Indian boarding 
school initiative, investigative report. So perhaps it was not actually a boarding school. We're not clear on that. And <laughs> he also goes on to say that Unitarians were typically not very well organized and we never fund things the way we should. So we weren't as effective as many other denominations were. Maybe that's not a bad thing. But the timeline from Harvard Square Library, in case you didn't know, Unitarians started Harvard. And so they have a lot of information about Unitarians. They say, there's an article that says, the American Unitarian Association accepted charge of the district covering the Colorado reservation occupied by various tribes of the Ute, consisting of 8,000 people. Eventually, however, this mission was moved to Montana and established as the Montana Industrial School for Indians. So in 1909, President Taft, if you didn't know, he was a Unitarian, appointed American Unitarian Association President Samuel Elliott to the Board of Indian Commissioners. In that capacity, Elliott addresses such as his speech, he gave addresses such as his speech from the scalping knife to the can opener. Right, which argued how only assimilation to white culture would save Native Americans from their own barbarism. Eliot believed that liberal Christianity was an appropriate vehicle for teaching Native character. So yes, our forward-thinking religious ancestors were also a product of their time. They too drank the Kool-Aid of white supremacy culture. I don't know how, but the Universalists somehow managed to stay out of this mess. So thank you, Universalists. However, many other denominations were much more deeply involved than even the Unitarians. So even though we formally apologized to the Utes back in 2009, we still have a lot to do to reflect on this tool of colonization and how we have been a part of it. The history tells us that in 1970, many, 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 couple, dec three, four decades later, a General Assembly of the Unitarians and the Universalists started calling for support for Indian rights. And every couple of years, they came out with another call or witness statement or some kind of resolution uh, in support of Native people. But it wasn't really until 2009 when we apologized to the Utes and in 2012 at General Assembly when we repudiated and burned the Doctrine of Discovery documents in partnership with many Native leaders in attendance. UUs also showed up, the clergy, myself included, showed up in great numbers at Standing Rock to support that protest. And I have to say, this is all good, but frankly, I get frustrated with all of our talk and resolutions and apologies, and I'm not sure who's actually listening. You know what I mean? Does anybody else have this experience? It's like, Oh yeah, that's a lovely little, well, is that not another aspect of white supremacy culture, actually? Mm -hmm. Just coming up with another resolution for somebody to read and ignore? So many of you have participated this summer in our experiment with Summer of Service, and I wanna thank you for that. This whole premise of Summer of Service is that we find, we create, our greatest hope through the actions that we take to make a difference. Through actions, not so much through words. We're awfully good at talking, perhaps maybe too good. So it is our action, it's our actions that bend that moral arc of the universe towards justice. 
But well-intended action can also cause harm if we're not careful. Heroically charging in on our white horses to fix the problems and then run out the door again, all right, you're welcome, causes actually more problems because it is more about taking action so that we get to feel good about ourselves and less about listening, learning, and companioning those who have asked us for help. Too often we've charged in when nobody's asking for our help. And building relationships, companioning and building relationships, this is where we can make the most difference. So our growing edge here is learning to step out of the center and put indigenous black people of colors, voices at the center. To listen, to learn, maybe stop talking, listen, learn, and follow their lead So I don't bring all of this up to shame any of us. I just want to mention shaming um, is toxic, first of all, and we don't need that. And the other thing is it shuts us down so that we are not able to affect meaningful change. So it, did anybody actually push any native people off of your own land yourself? I don't think so. Maybe our ancestors did. I can say that my ancestors were a part of this. I know, I know. But you were not. Okay, so the shame is not ours unless, unless we are complicit, complicit in our compliance with our dominant white supremacy culture that's happening around us. I said I wasn't going to mention the convention, but I just have to lift up that our political situation right now is making this incredibly black and white. It is right here before us. The veil is being lifted. We are seeing it for what it is. So to quote Michelle Obama, because I can't resist, don't just sit there, do, do something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but not just anything. Let's do the right thing. Let's listen, learn, decenter ourselves, and build relationships with those who want to partner with us. I want to share this quote by Lilla Watson, an Aboriginal teacher in Australia. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come here because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Then let us work together. So in the spirit of working together, I would like to invite our friend Christinia. Okay, making sure I'm pronouncing it right. Um, in the spirit of listening and learning from indigenous voices, I invite our special guest, Kristenia Iala, to share a few words. Kristenia, come on, is the director of, oh, okay, here we go. Let's see if I can say this right. Yeah. is the director of Teoshepe. Did I say it right? Teoshepe? Teoshepe, Winya. Winya. Maka. And we practiced. We practiced. Winya. Teoshepe. Teoshepe and Winya. Teoshepe. Teoshepe and Winya Maka. Teoshepe and Winya Maka. That's her organization, and she is the director. So I'm going to. Turn it over to you. 
Could, could you, my friend, I apologize, but could you use the microphone so our people on Zoom can hear? Is a mic two working? Check, check, check. Oh, I'm not hearing anything coming through mic two. Is it? Could you turn it up? I, I know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is it working? Whoa. There we go. It does say mic to me. <laughs> I know it. I know that feeling. That's okay. I was born on Rosemary Education in South Central South Dakota. Uh, and yes, I, um, my mother, grandmother, great grandmother, were all, what is this? I'm holding your oh, mic. Oh, okay. Because this mic is not working oh, for some okay. reason. Uh, we're all set to boarding school from the time we were old enough to go. And um, let me see. Uh, so they were all sent to boarding school? Yeah, they all saying? went to boarding school. So they were, they're were they called survivors, but I'm the, um, I'm the offspring of boarding school survivors. Um, many, many traditions, or year, years ago. Anyway. Um, I had so much I wanted to say, but I guess that the, um, you know, I wanted to say that, yes, I believe that all Christianity is work of the devil. Um, I believe that the Pope sitting in, a chair, in that chair is not the Pope, a, a man of God, but a God of the devil. That's not the devil himself. Who else goes and orders millions and millions of people to be murdered, have their land confiscated for the wealth of the church? I mean, I could go on and on about you know the pain uh, that has been inflicted upon all indigenous people all across Turtle Island. I, in case you can't tell, I am an activist. That's okay. <laughs> we want to hear. It. Um, and uh, you know, uh, the first the first real place on Turtle Island were the Native Americans, uh, and then the second wave, or the well, I'd say the the wave that first wave that came across the ocean were the Irish people. And after that, it was the black nation. Um, and so, and what I wanted to say when you were talking about, you know, the earth was beautiful, blah, 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 look at what we did. And I'm going, yeah, do you see how, what horrible ruins the earth is in? The earth mother is suffering because the white people yeah. think they're so doggone superior to yeah. the creator of all that is. You know, that's why most of them make their mistake. Look at us, how grand we are, you know? And so we're going to use these huge machines, you know, that dig the earth, uh, destroy things that shouldn't be destroyed. Um, and, you know, I was having a conversation with a new, another new friend yesterday who wants to do some permaculture stuff at her place. And I said, well, then you should bring some Dene people up here. I have Dene friends who plant the old way. They never bring huge machines in that are gonna destroy the earth around where they wanna plant. And what they have is they have planting poles and they stand there and they go like this and they go down to six feet. And people are, because people when they pass a, like a reservation uh, where there's drought and whatnot, they go, how to get all that green corn? Well, they go down to six feet with one little hole, right? One little hole, and they drop the seeds in. And they're, but you know what? Why? Because that's where the water table is. So they grow, and then they come up. And that's why, you know, I, I was talking about permaculture as well, and they were talking about the book. And I can't remember. Michael something or other. And I said, oh, that book. I said, the first time I heard about it, I was talking to a permaculture group for the first time. I said, that book is nothing more than a non-native person, a non-person of color, who traveled around gathering all of the best agricultural practice, practices of all of the indigenous people in the world. And then he came back and he put it all on the book and he said, oh, look what I did. This is called permaculture and I created it. Oh, I'm sorry. Like I said, I felt a lot of rage with a lot of things that were being said. Um, and I think that um, 
you know, you talk, talking about action. Um, I, I'm going to jump around a bit because I know okay. five minutes is short. Yeah, you're good. We're having a, um, we, Tiosh Bay William McCaw created um, an encampment at the former Hughes Land site um, in, uh, in 1920, I want to say <laughs> that, in 2022. And we had, we had set up two teepees. We had um, uh, the Dine people were there, uh, Lila Loon, Lila, Lila June Johnson came up. Uh, we had a lot of na uh, female Native American, what's the name of that? Ethnobotanist, <laughs> who walked the land and, and we talked, you know, about, uh, they're talking about coming down and helping us repair it and doing um, bio, bio what? Bio what? Oh, they're going to bio blitz it. Which is really a good thing, yeah. But first, what we have to do is once again we have to clean up what the non-natives have done, right? And this is the well, yeah. Hughes it was the Stadium. former Hughes Stadium, yeah. and then they decided to deconstruct it. It was there for fifty years. They decided to deconstruct it, and so they did. And so then we said, well, why don't you take something that the government stole from us? Why don't you remove a governmental building from it? And it's supposed to be higher education then it's supposed to go back to the indigenous people that it was stolen from. And they didn't want to do that. Of course they didn't want to do that. Why would they want to do that for good sake? Um, so anyway, we decided, well, you know what? Let's do an encampment out there. And I know Mary Ellen and, and um, her husband were there. And I think my, my niece was there. And by the way, that's my niece. Uh, may, you all may have met her. She's a uh, Pacific Islander. My father is from the Philippine Islands. so. I know about the Pacific Island folks too. And then this, this is my grandson. Oh. Um, this is, what's your name, grandson, Sandy? My name is Andre. And then that's my nephew, nephew, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was, he grew up in this faith. And uh, so I, it's kind of interesting to be here today. And you know, it, you're right, we do everything that we do in circles because the entire world is made up of circles. Every planet the earth that we walk on, it's all a circle. Look at the trees, look at everything is a circle. Look at your body. Is your body in a circle? Are your arms circles? That's why we, our teepees are always in circles. My mom used to say, I said, Mom, why did you live in teepees that are so round? And she looked at me and smiled. She said, so they could never corner us. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> My mother was a clever woman. Anyway, so, um, but we're about to take another action uh, at the Hughes, for me, Hughes Land site. Um, and so we've been going to a lot of city council meetings mm -hmm. and speaking our voice and telling them that they don't, they have no right to that land. And thank goodness, you know, we, I have people who work in the city government who called me and said, Christina, you need to know nobody has a deed to that land because natives don't need deeds to know it's their territory. So the city doesn't have a deed, the university doesn't have a deed, and those are my two biggest, what would you say, enemies? No, not enemies. Adversaries. <laughs> Adversaries, thank you, in getting the land back. So I would encourage all of you, uh, the next city meeting is when? On the Tuesday the 3rd, and if you can, come in person, in, in mass, carry placards, signs saying, return the land to the native people, because you know what? You have a very nice building here. We, the original people, the minute the colonizers stepped foot on this land, our spiritual paths were taken away from us at the threat of death, and a lot of our people were killed because of practicing our ceremonies. To this day, in Fort Collins, we don't have any place unless we travel long distances to practice our ways. And I'm a traditional Lakota woman, so I walk that path. We want the Hughes uh, site so we can have a ceremonial site. And it's not just for the Lakota, it's for the Ute, it's for the Shoshone, it's for the Cheyenne, uh, it's for the Arapaho, anybody who wants to come and practice their traditional ways. But mainly I'm thinking about the people who live in town because a lot of the other people, they live on their reservations, which are in close proximity. But my reservation is a little bit farther away. Anyway, so come and support us. Look for us. Um, 
I don't know where you're going to look for us. You can look for us on Facebook. We'll, we'll stay in yeah. touch. Okay, well, that's it. And thank you. Paloma Young. Can you tell me where you're at? Are you sure that's nothing? Yeah, yeah. Say that again. Oh. Meaning we are all related. Mitakuye mm. Oasan. Yeah, we are all related. Yeah. Are you sure there's nothing else? I can't you can say anything. Else. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to. Okay. Thank you so much. Christina is um, a Lakota grandmother traditional Lakota grandmother. We are honored to have you with us. Yes. And I hope this is the beginning of our relationship with your organization, because it's in the relationships where the healing happens. Oh, I knew it. That's OK. Stay where you are. Okay. So if you're curious about the Lakota Red Road, which is what we call it, I uh, would like to tell you that I offer workshops on the Lakota spiritual protocol and symbology. So um, I'll, you and I can talk more about that if anybody's interested. Fantastic. How many of you might be interested in that? Just raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite a few. See, look at that. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> so once again, after the service, we're going to have our potluck. And then we're going to come back in here and do our workshop starting at 1230. We have a wonderful song that I do not want to skip, so I invite you to rise in body or spirit and sing together, We Are. <laughs> out and connect in whatever way is comfortable for you, holding hands, hands on shoulders, or if you don't want to do that, um, whatever feels right to you. Oh, great. Thank you. So I really wanted to share with you these closing words by Howard Zinn. You can't be neutral on a moving train. To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, and kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. And if we only see the worst, it destroys our capacity to do anything. If we only see the worst, it destroys our capacity to do anything. 
if we remember those times and places, and there are so many where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act and at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act in however a small way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presence. And to live now as we think human beings should live in defiance of all that is bad around it is in itself a marvelous victory. Every action of compassion, sacrifice, and courage, these are my words, and kindness matter, and every action blesses the world. Keep blessing the world, my friends. We all need each other. Aho, may it be so, and amen. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you for telling me. <laughs>